there's a lot of good information, but I can't say that it's a great college essay. Too much context. We understand that this is important to him, but we don't understand why. Hey everyone, so I recently came across an essay that the Stanford admissions officers said was smart, but not good enough. And I skimmed through it real quick and I found a lot of mistakes in it. So today we're going to be editing that essay. Nothing crazy, just wanted to go through it, highlight the points that make the essay not good enough. So grab a notebook or grab your college essay if you already have a draft. Take notes because you don't want to make the same mistakes. So I have everything open on my iPad. I'm just gonna start sharing my screen and let's edit it together. So immediately, just from the prompt, we know that we just want to write a creative piece of writing that really represents us as a person. So let's get into it. Okay, so they start off talking about themselves and they're really trying to set the scene. So we can see over here in this section that they're really trying to bring the reader into their room and describe all of the books. Totally all right. I think that they could have started a bit better than I'm one of those kids who can never read enough. Honestly, I prefer that they started off describing the books. I'm big on description because that really sets the scene for the reader. The reader is reading a lot of essays. So starting with the description hook is always better. So potentially starting with what they have around here. So potentially what they have here when it comes to all of those descriptive points. Also something really interesting. I like the fact that they said growing up without TV. That's really personal and I'm not too sure why they didn't end up expanding on it. So this is just a quick idea but potentially starting with something like as I glaze over at my overflowing bookshelf I fondly remember and then go into potential events adventures from his favorite book. And that's where you kind of end talking about the books because we really want to go into his story that revolves around books. But the biggest mistake that we actually see in his essay, and I'm going to highlight this for you guys, is literally all of this part, everything I'm highlighting right now, is all information that is not about him. And that's literally the biggest mistake you can make in a college essay. Literally, that's almost like a hundred words, above a hundred words that just is about his favorite books. So there's a lot of issues here because A, we're not learning about him. We know he likes reading. We see that he only uses the word I, like let's see how many times he uses the word I. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, okay, so there just isn't enough personal aspects in the intro, which is really supposed to be as personal as you can be. So this presents two issues. The first one, too much extraneous information. And the second is, reader might not understand context. So we already know, like from the first paragraph, we can tell that the person is clearly a smart person because they use really good parallelism when it comes to words. And we see that they're definitely academic because all of the books that they mention are actually English literature based books. Like I read all of those in college for social science classes, but it's too much explanation and not enough about the reader. And this is one of the biggest mistakes I see in most college essays. Now let's move on to the body paragraph. So if you guys are reading along, you see the same mistake over and over again. This is a lot of context that we really don't need. Okay, so the one thing I do like over here, and this is something he should have done a long time ago, is the parallel. The reason he's introducing all of these books is because he's learned from them and he sees himself in these books. So this is a pretty short like sentence where you actually introduce that parallel. I'd rather you lead into that, like honestly, in the intro. Going back to the intro over here, he says, as I run my eye over the nearest titles, I notice only three words written in the last 50 years. So we know Know he really likes ancient works. So after that, he should have probably pivoted. That's where I would recommend that he pivot to say that there's a bond between him and these ancient writers and go into why that bond exists and expand upon the points he's already introduced or just something that gives me insight into the writer. So I do like this part about the bond linking himself to Homer, Tennyson, Virgil, Byron, Nietzsche, but it isn't enough. Like I love the description actually over here. In my mind, 
mind's eye, all of the great works I've read lie spread out on a gigantic blackboard. And that mystic bond takes shape in vast connecting network, branching from history to myth and from myth to fantasy. This is really great. This is probably the one part that I like the most out of his essay. This is really analytical, but in a very personal way. And I think this is really good so far. No grammar mistakes, nothing of note. You can tell this is a good essay, but the reason it wasn't good enough is just because of everything I've highlighted yeah, everything I've highlighted in yellow is just information that is extraneous, too much context, but there are really good points in here that he could have expanded on. Now let's move on to the next body paragraph. I've been unconsciously collecting this mental catalog of my life. I was 12 the first time I read The Unabridged Odyssey, but I've known the story for as long as I can remember. I like that he should have introduced the parallel here. I would really... <sighs> There's a lot of good information, but I can't say that it's a great college essay because there just isn't enough information about him. I like when he says I over here and here, here. It just becomes personal. Like this part is great. It's a great topic sentence. You want topic sentences to always give the reader a main inkling of what the essay is gonna be about. So I really like that, but it's just too much about other it's too much about other authors. Like you talk about more reading and we already understand that you like reading. So this might not be the best place to continue trying to emphasize that. Like he says, I just love the stories and we already know that and that he picked up the techniques of great authors. But what are those techniques and how do they relate to you on a more personal level? Let's write that out. And now this is the one thing that I honestly didn't like too much. When you set the scene and you start with a journey, A, he didn't really talk about his journey with reading and why it was so important, why reading was his refuge. I wanna know why it's so important. We understand that this is important to him, but we don't understand why. And it could be for so many reasons. And I just wish, I wish that they talked about this a bit more, but here they move on to something that's a bit more practical, like mentioning that you're a senior, talking about a specific paper, mentioning the teacher, and then going on to in college. And I really don't like this structure. It takes away from a larger journey because I want to learn more about their entire life and their entire life, this is is a journey almost that we go through and I don't want them ending on the note of something like you know in high school this made me better in high school this made me better in college your goal with learning shouldn't just be about high school or college and when you end your essay on the note of in college I look forward to doing this it sounds like you're almost giving college the satisfaction of defining your journey the note you end on is so so important I don't know I just I don't like that about it I wish that this was just instead of this part going on to college over here. I'd rather that be its own paragraph where they talk about something personal in their life and how reading has accentuated it. He goes on to talk about filmmaking. Maybe it could have been a class he took in a project he created in film that was completely immersed in all of these adventurous stories that he learned growing up. But rather than that, he just goes on to talk about film. Like that's a very sharp pivot and we don't really know where that pivot came from. Sorry, my handwriting is so bad. I just wanted to share this process with you guys. But yeah, so his pivot from talking about books all the way at the end pivoting to film, it's important to introduce a pivot very subtly. So I think a great way to introduce that pivot would have been if this was a paragraph, like all of that wording was its own paragraph that had a topic sentence about how books led to his love for film, like that would be great. But yeah, so after that pivot, we go into more about books. It's a very quick pivot again. So let's go back and analyze this. So over here, we pivot very quickly from great stories to film. And now we pivot back after we say we like film to writing an epic. And I'm not 100% sure if I completely understand the film interest because that wasn't specified. We understand that he was very interested in books because he goes on to talk about it literally everywhere without talking about himself, but more about books. And then suddenly, suddenly there's a little pivot over here to film very quickly, but then we pivot back to say, you wanna write your own epic. So let's say the things that that could be improved. Let's write that out.
Sorry, you're bearing with my horrible writing, but essentially I would say if I read this essay, of course I would like move a lot of things around on Google Drive. I don't edit like this. This is just for the video purposes. The point of the first paragraph really just introduces plots of his favorite books. The second one digs deeper more into the plots. And when you take a step back and look at the fact that those are the main points of these paragraphs, we realize it isn't personal enough. And that's what I want the reader to do. Take a step back and look at what the the paragraph itself is conveying and then write that one point out and then combine all four paragraph points and see if it tells a story. If it doesn't, it's not good enough. The second, they need more subtle pivots and the way you incorporate subtle pivots is throughout your essay and having evidence to support those pivots. The third is actually including personal anecdotes from his own life. Like I want to know what happened in his life that made him like books or what his love for books led him to in his life. In this case, it was filmmaking. So I would want an anecdote about that. That. And the fourth, less context, you have to keep in mind that we don't know who's going to be reading your essays. If you're going to write an entire essay about a specific character in a book and the reader hasn't even read the book, like that's an issue. So that's, that's another point. So if you got this far, thank you for watching all of this and watching my critiques. If you guys want to see more videos like this, where I just tell you why essays aren't up to par in some cases, definitely let me know. And don't forget to smash that like button if you found any value in this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much and I will see you guys at my next video.